Okay, this is a little bit of show and tell. I've reacquired some of my uh, old stamps from a stamp in the hand company. And I've mentioned uh, some of these stamps, uh, I don't know, I guess in a recent video. And when I've shown some of the original designs um, from both Stampscapes and a stamp in the hand. And um, I was just talking about, I was just showing some recent, uh, I don't know, not recent, but a catalog in a recent video where I was showing some designs that I uh, did for a stamp in the hand company back uh, back in the day. It was between 1980. It was probably around 1988 through 1991 is when I was doing a lot of designing for them. And I think when I left there, I I forgot what, how many it was. I counted them up at one time, and I think it was like two or three hundred designs in their line. But anyway, one of them was um, a nature series, and this is the stamp right here that really kind of um, gave me the idea to really expand on the idea of uh, a modular set of um, scenic stamps, scenic images because this one was going really well in one of the uh, releases. I had some snow types of uh, imagery and you can see where, <laughs> I don't know, it looks a little bit more cartoony. Um, I didn't really have a lot of time to spend on designs back then. I was just working for them part-time, probably about, I don't know, 10 hours a week, 12, I don't know, maybe more at some times if there was a show or something of that sort. But, um, I don't know, I would come up with a, a grouping of designs as everyone did that worked there and, um, you know, we'd have a few days or maybe a week or two to work on some designs. So if you're going to do like a series of designs, you know, you're best to, uh, best served to get right on it and really try to churn out as many as you could in that time frame. But anyways, this is the incarnation of stamps that we used to use there. They're this kind of this, I don't know, whatever you call this. Um, shape here, but it comes with this plastic top, right? And underneath here was a piece of glossy paper, okay? Now, when they got these strips here, you're buying them by the width, as you do these days with uh, wooden rubber stamps, but, you know, it comes in a long strip, and um, there used to be this guy, Jerry, that cut all these down to whatever length um, we wanted to, but what that would do is it would leave a lot of sawdust underneath these um, plastic housings here, and so the first thing you would do with the wood, if you're about to make up, like, say, this design right here, is you would take up this off right here, we would put all these in this little plastic basket and go to the sink, wash these all off with water, then we'd take a towel and you'd have to wash this off completely, you know, dry it off completely, okay? And then <clears throat> we had a master stamp for every one of the stamps at a Stamp in the Hand Company, which must have been in the numbers of about 2,000, I'm guessing. And then you, what you would do is you would take the paper that came from each one of these pieces right here, and you would take the master stamp and you would color them. Marvy brush markers, uh, even dye based pads weren't in, around at that time. You would color these up, you know, and you can see here it's kind of multi-tone, a little bit of green, blue, maybe some darker blue, lighter blue, okay? And then you would take that and you would stamp that piece of paper out, okay? And then you'd have that image, and then you would throw it underneath this, you know, piece right here and slide it on in or however way so whoever was doing it wanted to do it you can put it underneath there and clip it down like that <clears throat> and then on these stamps the cushion is already you know on this mount the cushion let's see if I can focus this there we go on these that cushion is already on here okay so we take the unmounted stamp this rubber die and you would um, slap some uh, rubber cement on that, and you would put rubber cement on this, okay? So two-sided, and you glue it down there. So there was a lot of work involved in this type of um, stamp right here. Um, that was pretty much the way to get color back in those days. Um, not, 
The first company that, that I saw you that used a label was Hero Arts, and I believe it was single color, okay? People just weren't using labels back in those days, all right? So if you wanted color, you're pretty much having to do it this way, okay? Now, the color uh, labels came about, you know, very soon after, or, I don't know, the industry started cluing in there, but um, I'll show you what I did um, with our company um, soon after uh, a new technology was uh, around, okay? So anyways, I'll just go through some of the um, stamps here that I did for the company. This was a, a bunch of cloud stamps, and I was just, I just did a bunch of um, cloud types of the stamps before the Nature series, because, you know, there was Clouds were good for any type of background, okay? So I did this kind of reverse out cloud right here. You know, you stamp it and it looks like a kind of break in the clouds. Uh, big bulbous. There was a lot of cute designs back then, so these designs look a little bit more kind of cutesy, right? And here's the first uh, field of sky stamp. It was used to fill in a lot of surrounding areas. It was what I use. It's what I use um, like a sponging method for now, you know, to fill in color. But that was it. It was just this field of dots, and that was made to fill in an area like this around a field of lightning. If you stamp that out, it'll be real blocky. You'll have this area that's kind of a reversed out version of lightning bolts, but then you'd have this area around it, right? If you're stamping this on a white piece of paper, all this area out here has to be filled in, so we would just kind of use this to fill in around that image, like so. Um, all kinds of different clouds here. You can see kind of the uh, the beginnings of uh, some of the Stampscape stamps. If you're um, familiar with the Stampscape's line, I wanted a reversed out sun, you know? Before you used to see, you know, a uh, a positive version of the sun as opposed to a reverse version of the sun. So that was my first cloud with sun type of image, you know. There was the field of snow, you know, getting some snowfall in there. More different types of imagery. I do have these um, little spaceman guys on a, a sheet now satellite, different, I don't know, different little sets that we used to, I don't, actually, I don't know if this one came in a set, it, you know, back in the day, we, we weren't really selling very many sets at a stamp in the hand, some rain, um, some of these boxes are in order, I, I'm not going to show all of them, oh, um, this is an image here, kind of your little tiny reversed out versions of sky imagery, okay? A field of stars or something like that, I'm not really quite sure. Moon and stars, you can see those little twinkly lights, but these ones were really small. A lot of the things that people were stamping out back in the day were envelopes and like little gift tags, stuff like that, so it had to be kind of small. We weren't thinking of kind of edge-to-edge -edge scenic compositions back in that day, okay? This was a few, uh, maybe a year or two before I started doing the nature types of lines, okay? So there were more kind of isolated images, you know, that, you know, we weren't really thinking of it in an entire system, or I wasn't. Okay, here's some things that I've kind of mentioned in the past. These are color lasers right here, and you can see where I've kind of ruled them with the uh, white, uh, blue lines. You know, it, there was a lot of coloring involved, you know, in a stamp design, all right? So in something like this, this grapevine, white browns, a couple different versions of uh, green in here, a couple different tones of purple and magenta, and you had to color each one of those, okay, like that, and then you stamp it out, you get one impression of it, right? And that's what used to go underneath that stamp. So some company or some store ordered five of those stamps. You got to stamp out five of those. So we're talking about a lot of time just coloring these things. And we were sending them out with the original image stamped out. So we're talking about a lot of labor, but also 
if you know about dye-based inks, if they're sitting out on a shelf for a long time, or so you stamp out a scene, you know, a card for someone that's sitting on their, you know, refrigerator for any length of time at all, could be a very short time. You know, it fades out. So we had, I'm sure, a lot of faded out looking stamps on store shelves. You know, especially if it was, you know, sitting around for a period of months and was exposed to the light. So color lasers. I think it was the Canon color laser came out and. Uh, we would go to, you know, when I went to a copy center, I noticed that they did these types of things. That was our answer. So I started doing these master panels of about 11 by 17. And Reed really is out. See, like this one right here. This is my um, ornament um, streamers. I forget what this one was called. But you can imagine coloring up each one of those little balls and then stamping it out. And that was, you know, our product. So. In doing it this way, I could just stamp out, you know, I could spend, you know, an hour or two coloring this, you know, coloring 10 of these exactly the same way, and that color laser would be probably, you know, 11 by 70, you can fit a lot more of these on one panel. And that sheet cost, I think it was $3.25. Now, if I was to stamp that whole thing out, um, it probably took me an hour or two or something like that so every time we utilized these sheets we were saving that you know saving the company probably I don't know five six seven eight dollars or something like that plus everything was consistent and these colored lasers wouldn't fade on the store shelves so if we're going to keep doing it this way with these um, blocks and this was certainly the way to go so I spent about a year at least I didn't work for them full-time um, but uh, just coloring, just doing these master panels and just stamping repetitively all of these images, whatever they might be, not just my own designs for the company, um, but other people's designs so that we wouldn't have to uh, do this um, individual coloring all the time and uh, having our things faded out on store shelves. So here's some still some uh, color lasers, you know multi-tones kind of on a column like that and then just some green on those things for ivy I don't know just all kind you know it just gosh looking back at these things and these were all done with pens too, Marvy pens so you can see the types of designs that were done but anyways it was a big question of how to configure these master sheets I didn't have like one whole 11 by 17 panels just you know for this rooster you know or chicken or hen or whatever so it was always you know kind of a question of how many do you put of certain designs and do you group them you know and hopefully you know the configuration was such that everything's sold at about the same rate so you wouldn't be zero you know color lasering off several of the same things and uh, you know having them sell at disproportionate you know quantities because you'd be stuck with a bunch of extra colored lasers that you know but you'd have to do that to get you know the other ones that were selling faster if you know what I mean anyways too much information but um, anyways here's the nature line this is what it looked like in its original incarnation I have a lot of these stamps now in our nature sets this one's nature set number two I think these ones are in one I think I think this is in three but you can see all kinds of designs like these ferns for foregrounds you know, the individual trees done in this kind of format like that but you can see different um, incarnations and values of green in within here and I colored in the uh, the um, trunk there the stamp is um, in its red rubber form and it's uh, rubber cemented onto this uh, piece of foam. The back of the room where we used to make these stamps it was really pretty strong, uh, strongly scented with um, rubber cement uh, back in those days. But um, anyways, that's what these things look like. So, um, the funny thing about that is, um, I think right when I was just about done doing all of the, getting the entire line transferred into 
um, those master panels for the use of um, colored lasering, they switched at a stamp in hand to, um, you know, your wooden block mount with the, uh, you know, black indexed stamped on top of the wood format. But in the meantime, though, it saved them tons of money. I think I was estimating it was like a savings of twenty or twenty thousand dollars a year or something like that to do it that way. And forever, forever long they used it after that. So, pretty significant. I think this one right here, no, that is a color laser here. I was thinking that one might be an original coloring, but anyway, these are a lot of the different designs that I used to do, or that I did for the comp you know that company back in the day. It was all kinds of things like Christmas ornaments and uh, streamers were built real big. That one wasn't the one that sold like cre. Oh, here's the one right here. This one sold massive, massive amounts. Sometimes people would just um emboss it in gold or silver or something like that, but um, they would have to color it. I didn't used to stamp in those days either. This is back around uh, pre-1991 before I did the Nature line, and um, I remember at the stamp conventions, uh, uh, Kathy from Stamp the Hand, she would um, have a couple of her friends from uh, the Calligraphy Society um, come in and they would do all the demonstrations in the booth, okay? And I remember this guy, uh, Jeff, he hated when someone requested this one because of all the different colors and all those balls like that. Um, he hated it when they uh, requested that for him to, uh, to do. <laughs> and I would just laugh. But, uh, really fun times. And... <clears throat> I don't know, I did a lot more designs, but I'm not showing them here, but um, anyways, one, one of the things about um, designing for the company back then is they did things on a kind of a, a royalty basis. You would get, you know, a certain percentage of the sales um, when uh, you came up with these designs, but they would also give you, um, you got five of each design that you did, so that's why I have um, so many of these um, designs of mine. Oh, I think this one's originally, this one's a baseball here, and yeah, this one is on glossy cardstock, so it's been stamped out and just slipped right underneath here. This one doesn't really fit this um, stamp too well, so see that? Something like this doesn't look good. I didn't like the idea of that being on a store shelf, because, you know, it would never sell, and especially if it faded out. This one's been kind of, you know, in the... Uh, out of the sunlight, so, you know, it's still okay, but not great. Oh, this is my junk food set. Look at that little one right here. We called it junk food. I guess it could have been called fast food, too. But I think we called it junk food. But anyways, different types of celebration things, like Chinese New Year, um, dragon kites I did. I was doing all kinds of streamers, as you might have noticed in that other one. This one's a birthday streamer, so you stamp it out. And then if you needed to go again, you, that thing right there can match up perfectly. Stamp it out there, stamp it out there. So there was a lot of coloring being done because that's what... There were no stamp pads, uh, you know, back in the day, like I said. So it was all coloring on the stamp itself, and then you would stamp it out, and that would be your impression, you know. There, uh, there was... I mean, people, you know, used La Plumes and uh, Tombos to to take outline stamps and they would color them in that way, but um, otherwise, you know, if you're getting color in the impressions, that's what you're doing. You're doing it with, you know, a lot of Marvy brush markers, or like I said, the La Plume and Tombos, but a lot of people had this, I think it's called this 1500 series of uh, brush marker pens from Marvy, so... Anyways, I spent a lot of time with these pens here. <clears throat> Not these specific ones, but just Marvy's in general coloring all these things and just um, master panel after master panel of uh, originals t for the sake of reproduction so thank heavens for that uh, laser technology at the time because color printing of things like this you know professional color printing like an offset was completely out of the question you know that was like well beyond what we would be able to be doing back in those days because 
we would have had to print up, you know, <clears throat> I don't know, 10,000 of, you know, a single design or something like that. So it was down to hand coloring and taking them into Kinko's and having sheets and sheets and sheets of these things run off, you know, for the uh, purpose of this type of um, stamp format. And I'm kind of wondering if some people still use these. I think two, pe two companies use these back in those days. And one of them was us, and another one was at this other company. But they soon switched over to your typical wood block mount and um, black ink indexing. All right? Except for Hero Arts, again, like, you know, it started using those labels, you know. So anyway, that is that. And uh, it's kind of interesting going through these things. I really like these little foil things, you know. You can put someone's address, and it was like this little... I don't know what they call these, like dingbats or something like that, you know, that you can stamp, you know, around as a kind of a decorative uh, addition to um, to your elements on a, on a page. So, um, I don't know. A lot of different uh, purposes for uh, rubber stamps back then. Kind of a little bit, you know, different, you know, there was, we were always doing, people were always doing, um, greeting cards and uh, exchanging cards for people, but um, I don't know, there was a lot more like bookmarks and things like that being done, and a lot more envelopes, you know, who sends snail mail these days, you know, well, we're in the holiday season, so a lot of that's going on right now, but there was a lot more of that going on probably back in the day, and that included those male artisans that would just do, you know, amazing types of... Uh, artwork on tops of envelopes just for the sake of having a really great looking envelope to send to someone and exchange with them that way so anyway thanks for watching little uh, trip down memory lane for me and kind of interesting seeing these uh, uh, types of stamps again and thinking about uh, all those rubber stamp fumes <laughs> you can see where that um, um, rubber cement has been applied, I guess not in the entire thing, but on most of it here, so, ah, kind of fun. All right, thanks for watching.